something like a little caffeine. How are you doing there? Greetings and salutations. Or as I say in Kentucky, howdy! <laughs> I don't talk like that, by the way. I can change languages, though, when I'm certain parts of Kentucky. Hey, how you doing? Hey, what's up? <laughs> That's how I normally talk, actually. <clears throat> I like to keep things simple. I love, 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 love making videos about stuff nobody else is talking about on YouTube. Keep things simple, right? Simplicity is divinity, which is my motto. Make things really simple. I had a lot of people recently ask me, and it's not just been recently, they say, why are these people always talking about um, uh, photons and uh, neutrons and stuff like that? I say, well, I've never denied nuclear particles, by the way, but I said fundamentally these people are atomists, when you're a hammer, everything's a nail, and uh, these people are not scientists in the truest sense, either Aristotelian or Platonic. What they are is atomists. They're mathematicians, and the fundamental premise of uh, the religious belief of mathematics, and I did say religious, is that if you can't count it, it doesn't exist, and you've got to be able to count that stuff. So we've got photons, and we've got electrons. I like to keep things really simple. I've got a couple diagrams over here. One thing that Einstein did get right, by the way, he said if you can't explain it to a barmaid, and that's kind of an insulting and uh, misogynistic, unfortunately, way of saying, you know, if you can't explain it to a dumb person, then you don't really understand it. <clears throat> that is accurate if you can't explain it to a child, for example. Then you truly don't understand it. Mother Nature, as I've humorously said, is a, you know, a, a chick with uh, dreadlocks and... Uh, Muddy feet, you know, she doesn't do math. Everything works off of pressure mediation. It's very, very simple. Capacitance, resistance, permeability, permittivity. Let's actually talk about the most important thing, and that is, and go off of there, talk about what's untenable. Yeah? There's a great word everybody should learn, untenable. Excuse me, sir, what you said is untenable. That has only ever been, I've talked about this before, but I'd like to go in depth and make it really simple about the ether and talk about Nikola Tesla's ether. There's only ever been postulated two foundations for ultimate reality, ever in history. And no one ever talks about this, not in any book that I've ever read, not in any video that I've ever seen. One is in atomism, and the other one is in the ether. Only the ether is tenable. Yeah. Talk about Occam's razor? Yes, Occam's razor. Simplicity is divinity. Can it, is it tenable? You know, other than postulating, you know, monsters and unicorns and leprechauns, which is what relativity does. It talks about virtual particles, which don't exist. They're not the inputs and outputs of any experiment ever done. They'll actually use the word quantum extensively. Well, what is this? We don't understand. Well, it's quantum. It's quantum effect. You know, I could explain it to you, but you'd have to have a PhD. Therefore, I can't explain it to you because you're just not smart enough. You know, you have to have, be a peer-reviewed academician, and you must have tenure at the university for me to explain this quantum tunneling effect. What's this word quantum? You know, Tesla, Faraday, Steinmetz, Heaviside, Maxwell, they never use this word quantum because it has nothing to do with field theory. It's nothing actually tangible at all. It's a woo-woo word. I don't know if you've ever heard that before, woo-woo. It's kind of like the Jabberwocky poem. I don't know if you've ever read the Jabberwocky poem. It's just a bunch of nonsense and rubbish strung together, it kind of sounds melodic. What is quantum? This video is not about quantum. I've actually talked about quantum until I'm blue in the face. Occam's razor, right? Is it simple? Does it follow? Does the center hold? What we're really asking is, does the center hold? If you can postulate a center, and there have only ever been postulated two centers. One is atomism, and the other one is the ether. Does atomism's center hold? And by center, I mean foundation. Before you could build a building, especially a high-rise, you have to have a great foundation. And everything has to be built up from the foundation. And there's nobody on this earth, whether they be an atomist, a materialist, someone into relativity, nobody on earth can deny the fact that you first have to start out with a foundation or a substrate to phenomena. Nobody. There's nobody on earth that can deny that. Everybody's in complete agreement. However, the question then is, is the foundation made out of uh, unicorn farts and uh, leprechaun whiskers, in the case of atomism, or is it made out of what is logical, reasonable, and explains all observed phenomena? You can never explain wireless power induction with atoms. 
You can't do it. It's completely impossible. We have to talk about fields. Say, well, how's wireless power induction there, Mr. PhD, Mr. Science? Well, it's, it's uh, lines of force. There are no lines in nature. Line is not a thing. Line is a human concept. Force is not a thing either. Force is like talking about waves. Waves don't exist. Waves are what things do, not what things are. Force is of what, by what, and upon what. Force is not a thing. Lines of force. Oh, you mean fields, right? I know you're trying to say fields. You said lines of force, conceptual abstractions. That's right. Well, you've never explained a field. What's a field? Well, fields are lines of force. They, I get this circular, circular reasoning. They, they wind back up at the same place with uh, leprechaun whiskers and unicorn farts. It's fascinating. It's untenable. It's a great word everybody should learn, untenable. Instantaneous action at a distance, AAD. Can't explain that with atomism. It's completely impossible. These people, by the way, are no different than a true metaphysical atheist. And it's like screaming the word the devil in the middle of church service. It's just like, oh, you just don't do that. You don't use the ether word. These scientists will admit, many of them have, this is the word we can't use. They use every other word other than ether. They'll talk about quantum foam. Um, they'll talk about dark matter quantum effects. By the way, in their own admission, these are not my words, these are their words. People keep asking me about dark matter. I say, I'll refer you to them and exactly what they say it is. They're, by the way, they're making reference to the ether. Well, we call it matter because we think everything is matter. And we call it dark because we don't know what it is. We know about 85% or more of the universe is dark matter. Well, what is dark matter? Well, we have no idea what it is. These are their own words. They call it dark matter because they think everything's matter. To a hammer, everything is a nail. To an atomist and a mathematician, everything is a particle. Count it, it's a particle. It's untenable. It's illogical. It does not follow. The center does not hold. Nihil ex nihilo. Nikola Tesla actually asked this completely illogical in reference to light because we're talking about uh, matter and materialism in reference to the ether. He actually postulated, well, how could a uh, light, this incredible speed, of course, light is not moving, light is not an emission. You know, how can a, a lit match, you know, be emitting out uh, light at this tremendous speed and it's the exact same thing as a powerful sun or a super powerful uh, light source? It's untenable. It's illogical. You can never explain, too, light speeding back up after it leaves glass or water without breaking the law of conservation of energy. When you eliminate out the ether, and that's all light is, is an ether perturbation modality. I'll show you this simple diagram because I could show this until a child, because every child has dropped a rock into water, right? You, you photograph it at slow speed. This is what you see. Explain it to a child. child will get it. If you can't explain it to a child where they understand it, then you yourself don't understand it. Ask any PhD physicist, excuse me, sir, how does light speed back up, speed back up after it leaves glass or water? Because they all admit, and of course it does, the perturbation, when they say the speed of light changes. Well, how does it speed back up after it leaves glass? I mean, is it accelerating? Can they're breaking the law of conservation of energy there. That's untenable. The center does not hold. Light is not emission, and it's not a wave-particle duality, and there's no such thing as a photon. Photon is conceptual abstraction based upon something really simple and reasonable. And if you're an atomist, that's the conclusion you would make if you're an atomist. Occam's razor, right? Does the center hold? By the way, the electron discovered, the phenomenon discovered by J.J. Thompson is one unit of dielectric induction. Every expert of field theory vis-a-vis -vis Heaviside, Tesla, uh, Steinmetz, such a thing as an electron particle. It's an abstraction. Yeah, it's one unit of dielectric induction. Accurate description. This medium of propagation, the ether, must exist. This medium must be prominent throughout our investigations. This is Treaty on Electricity and Magnetism by the god of field theory, James Clerk Maxwell. This medium, i.e. the ether, of course, is the unmanifest substrate of all things, including matter itself. Mother Nature is really, really, really simple. Understanding it is not simplex, However, that requires wisdom and insight and understanding, but simplicity is divinity. And if anything is simple and divine, no matter where you sit in your position on things in nature, you must agree to that, both simple and divine. 
Mother Nature is a crazy chick with a bag of bumping particles of all different types and sizes, like Santa Claus with a magic bag full of countless different presents, is ridiculous. You cannot reconcile light and matter. You can't reconcile anything. You can't explain instantaneous action at a distance. You can't explain uh, hysteresis of the ether. You can't explain uh, breaking the law of conservation of energy in the case of light as its rate of propagation changes. Through, through, I, should, I hate to say through different media because it's not passing. It's the actual ether of the substrate itself in sub, subspace. You say in counter space, you can say zero point energy. Who cares what words you use? It doesn't make any difference. I'm going to do a Robert Laughlin uh, quote here, which is very accurate. This word ether, because this word is seen like talking like a hardcore atheist talking about God. You just like, yeah, I don't use the G word. Or screaming out the devil in the middle of church service. This word, the ether, to these physicists, to these relativists, to this, uh, this uh, group, if you will, of quantum, it's just like screaming out God or the ether. So the word ether has extremely negative connotations in theoretical physics only because it's past association with opposition to relativity. The word ether has been used in metaphysical and religious discussion for thousands of years. These people are, they spit on metaphysics and they definitely spit on belief systems. I have no connection to belief systems. I don't want any connection to religions at all. But just because these people discuss the word ether for thousands of years now, the wisest minds who ever exist, um, uh, Galileo, uh, Newton, um, the um, Divina Proportione illustrations, Leonardo da Vinci, Aristotle, Plato, Plotinus, on does, what does that got to do with anything? It doesn't. Well, we don't want to be associated with that stuff. It's too much heavy connotation with the word ether. Right, they still talk about the ether, except they call it quantum foam. They call it dark matter. No, the ether doesn't exist. We've got to replace it with particles. But that's what Mother Nature is, bag of bumping particles. It's ridiculous. Negative connotation this is unfortunate because stripped of these connotations, it nicely captures the way most physicists actually think about the vacuum or vacuum energy. They're talking about dark matter. The modern concept of vacuum space confirmed by every experiment is a relativistic ether. Except in their case, I've atomized it. No, the ether doesn't exist, but we replace the ether with something else that is exactly like the ether, but we hate the word ether! That's not an exaggeration, even though I said that humorously. That's actually how these people think, and that's how they write, and that's the stuff that they teach. Let me give you a quote from Eric Dollard. Nothing is shot out of the moving laser. The electric field can only be soaked into the medium at the rate defined by that medium. Light can only travel at luminal velocity as defined by the dielectric medium and its dimensional relationship of 1 over c squared and numeric constant light is not a material projection, it is an inductive process, a process of the ether. This is a quote from Dollar. Dollar is 99% correct on that one. It's correct. That's all light is, is a compound coaxial circuit. It's an ether perturbation modality, just as all fields are ether perturbation modalities. That's all they are. This is a Nikola Tesla. Tesla said of relativity, this is a mass of errors and deceptive ideas violently opposed to the teachings of great men of science of the past and even to common sense. Nikola Tesla wrote a poem against Einstein. He called him a fuzzy-haired crackpot. It's called Olymp uh, Fragments of Olympian Gossip. He called Einstein a fuzzy-haired crackpot. The only person, lucky for me, I have a I have a Tesla and an Einstein doll here. <laughs> Created and sent to me. <laughs> the only person, this gentle soul, Nikola Tesla, who railed against, the only person we know that Nikola Tesla railed against and thought lowly of was this person, Einstein. Everything that you admire Einstein for was actually stolen from Henri Poincaré. There have been over four books written about this fact. Henri Poincaré. A lot of his books are free downloads on archive.org. All the stuff, you say, oh man, Einstein's such a smart guy. Now, stolen from Henri Poincaré, even Einstein said the secret to success is hiding your sources. Isn't that fascinating? That's exactly what Einstein did. Tesla said that there was no energy and matter other than that which it received from its environment, i.e. the ether. Atomism is completely untenable. untenable. I almost said untenable. <laughs> untenable. I'll edit that out of this video. Untenable. They reify waves, and of course waves don't exist. 
They reify particles. They talk about forces, and forces don't exist. Force is an activity between one or more things, two or more things, actually. Force of what, by what, and upon what? Relative to what? Not relativity, relative to what? Forces. Lines, now. Warp space and time. Once again, we get back to unicorns and leprechauns. Time does not exist. Time is a measure like pounds, watts, volts, amps. Time does not exist. Every ancient culture of wisdom said that time does not exist. It exists conventionally, but it doesn't exist ultimately. Same thing with space. Space cannot be warped. Space has no properties. It's like talking about bending unicorn farts. You're not going to bend space. Yet we grew up with this science fiction nonsense. They call it quantum foam, dark energy, dark matter. They have a lot of different words for vacuum energy. It's the ether. There's only ever, I can't stress this enough, people don't get it. There's only ever been two foundations postulated. One's the ether and one is atoms, bumping particles. Only this one is logical, tenable, simple, divine. Simplicity is divinity. This one is untenable. The center doesn't hold. It violates simplicity and beauty of nature. It is completely illogical. You can't explain wireless power induction. You can't explain instantaneous action at a distance. You can't explain the properties observed of the phenomena of light. Here we have a simple example of light over here. Yeah. This is the one, of course, I drew this one, but, you know, it's a little transverse electromagnetic. Yeah, we've got the, foco the photon, which is pulse perturbation, right? Instead of doing that, you want to explain it to a child, because if you understand it, you should be able to explain it to a child. Yeah, like a five- or ten-year-old child, something like that. And say, you want to know what light is? Yeah, it's one of the great mysteries of the universe. What's light? We see this, you know, this, you drop something into a pond, like a rock or whatever, straight down. You get this, Right? See, we actually have the transverse waves over here, radiating outwards. And we have this rarefaction here, and we have a compression here, this little water droplet. Yeah, 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 I know, I've seen that before. Everybody's seen that, including any child. They drop wa rocks in the... Okay, let's take it one step further. Not make it any more complicated. Here we have the waves. Waves of what? Waves of what? In this case, we're talking about the medium, the water. This is exactly... Because when you drop a rock in the water, you create a disturbance in the medium! What is light? When energy is released, we actually create a coaxial circuit perturbation in the medium, i.e. the ether. There's the particle right there. We have a rarefaction right underneath it. What you see right here is a rarefaction. We've got a particle here, a rarefaction, meaning nothing's there. These are like pinch rarefaction compressions in the ether, yeah? But it's a compound. It's a coaxial circuit. Yeah, it's pretty simple, pretty simple. Yeah, we take it one step further than that. It's like, well, I get it. You know, I've got it uh, pretty clear now. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, you understand that? Yeah, okay, we only have to take it one more step. What we're going to do is we're going to take that drop and we're going to multiply it times three. Then we're going to put it on its side. Yeah, one well, is like that. Isn't that simple? There we go. Over here, the only thing that would change between frequency would be how close these are together and the amplitude. Yeah, so we have the frequency and the wavelength. Yep. The spatial volume would decrease as the capacitance increases because the smaller the space, the higher the uh, higher the capacitance. In the case of like X-ray radiation or gamma radiation, take it even further, we end up with the fundamental particle. Ultra high energy light is just the fundamental particle we call the proton. And all free neutrons become protons. That means there's only one fundamental particle. Makes Mother Nature really really simple. So here we have it. We just turn the water droplet on its side. Here we have the rarefaction, here we have the compression, and these are what the, the uh, foolish uh, atomists call a photon, right there. You see those little water droplets there? Yeah, there's a droplet, there's a droplet, there's a droplet, yep. Over here we have the frequency and the wavelength, yeah. This is light. That's exactly what light is. And, of course, this is water. I make it simple for understanding. I turn the water droplets on their side, but the medium... In case we're not talking about water, we're talking about the ether. The medium is everywhere. We are everywhere within the ether and are composed of ether condensates ourselves. When we have energy release, the manifestation of light, this is what is happening. The water droplet in replication, depending on the, the only thing that's different is the frequency and the wavelength in replication. 
We have this. Even a 10-year-old can understand this. If you don't understand this, then a 10-year-old is smarter than you are. This is not that complex. When I've said many countless thousands of times that light is a compound ether perturbation modality, specifically a coaxial circuit. I don't get coax. You know what the cross-section of a coax cable? Even a 10-year-old probably doesn't know what the cross-section of a coax cable looks like. It's like, well, this is a coaxial representation. We have uh, the, uh, in the case of coax cable, a center conductor, and then we actually have the rebounding uh, shielding in which the signal reverberates off. And of course, we have this signal right here this pulse perturbation, rarefaction, and compression, which is synonymous to the drop. So all we have to do is just turn that drop on its side, replicate it a few times. Of course, in the case of light, you know, many billions and trillions and trillions and trillions of times. That's what light is. As Nikola Tesla said, everything is light. I wouldn't have believed that 25 years ago, but I knew it had to be true because Mother Nature is really, 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 really simple. Dreadlocks, hairy armpits, muddy feet, hemp skirt, Really simple chick. Simplicity is divinity. And this girlfriend is as simple as it gets. Because you see this? This is what happens when you drop a rock in the water. Everybody's seen this. Well, just turn it on its side. It gives you the frequency. gives you the amplitude. You have the rarefactions here, where there's no drop. And then we have the compressions here. Yeah? Those are energy compressions. Yeah? Rarefactions and compressions. You know what that is? That's an ether condensate. And if you increase the energy high enough, you end up with a ZTP, or a zero-time particle, or what we call a photon, the fundamental particle of the entire universe, because all matter is compounded hydrogen. Every scientist on Earth agrees to that. All matter is compounded hydrogen. Nobody's in disagreement on that fact. Yeah. What's, a, what's hydrogen? The most simple form of hydrogen. Of course, just one fundamental particle. And it's electrostatic dynamo that's surrounding it in a shell, a shell of force. Yeah? Really, really simple. See, explain light and 80% of the universe by giving a water droplet analogy that even a 10-year-old could understand. Well, gee, that's simple. It's just so simple. It seems stupid it's so simple. Well, that's what Mother Nature is. She's simple. And the only reason people don't get it is because they're that unintelligent and they're that uninquisitive as to natura naturans or mother nature. That's all light is. I don't get the coax circuit. I don't know what you're talking about. And you keep saying light's a coaxial circuit. It's like, okay, you want to explain light more simply? There it is right there. Simple, isn't it? It's also too beautiful and divine. It's called the bumping particles. It's the complete opposite. It's not simple, it's not divine, and its center does not hold, and it's untenable. Anyway, I hope you liked this video. If you did, any donation is warmly welcome. Or you can tell me how much you hated it. That's also too welcome. I read every comment. Even the ones that are angry. Urgh. Say whatever you like. Have a lovely weekend, and happy holidays. Shabbat and Shalom. Um, Feliz Navidad. Yeah. What's some other ones? Um, uh, I forgot the other ones. <laughs> That's why you think about ten things at once. Thank you. Goodbye.